Welcome to the Landscape Photography Vlogcast. Join me, Mr. Photo Ninja, and Mr. Paul Thompson Photography from YouTube. Every Sunday morning at 10am for everything photography related. And also look out for some special guests. Grab yourself a brew, beer, or something stronger, and let's get into this week's vlogcast. Well, hello and welcome to the Landscape Photography Vlogcast. And with us this week is Matt Bishop. How are you doing, mate? Good day, mate. How are you going? All right? Yeah, not too bad at all. So, what we usually do at this point is just get a bit of an insight as to who you are and and how you started in photography. God, how I started in photography? Uh, I started drawing pictures when I was a little kid. And used to get picked on all the time. I should have been out there playing football. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't until I actually escaped Australia. Escaped Australia, I shouldn't say that, because I love my home country. But uh, it wasn't until I moved overseas when I was uh, 21 years old that I just uh, got blown away by the Swiss Alps. I spent about three months climbing in the Swiss Alps. And I just... Just these mountains and uh, the scenery was just incredible. Never seen anything like it in my whole life. And yeah, yeah. I knew then that I had to capture it on camera. So I went out and bought my first camera back then. That was what, yeah, 2002. Yeah, 2002. Right. Cool. Never looked back since. And what was the first camera then? It was a, a Pentax. Yeah. Right, cool. And you stuck yeah. with them ever since, eh? Yeah, stuck with them ever since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So obviously, at the minute we can't travel, we can't do anything. So how are you managing with it? Oh, you know what? Since I think since the COVID started, we're we talking. You know, in at least in Italy, it sort of started off in March. Yeah. Since March, I've probably been out three or four times. Yeah, it's a struggle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very very hard. I mean, I don't know if you know, I work in I work in an operating theatre, and. Yeah, um, yeah. We've been pretty much under the pump, so it's, it's been hard to actually even get holidays and 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 get out and spend spend time out on field. Um, you know, yeah. in the in the in a normal everyday life, you know, you get you get a few weeks holiday off and, and weekends and stuff, and you always make an excuse to get out. But travel restrictions are ridiculously tight over here, yeah, and uh, it makes it really really hard to go anywhere we're getting really good at shooting locally aren't we mate yeah tell me about it is it every video i do at the minute it's a uh, local shooting here and it is. shoot local there. that's right yeah there's only, there's only there's only so many dams and woodlands you can shoot isn't there well this is the problem and until it becomes a bit samey but you've just got to work with what you've got really haven't you yeah, it's yeah. all you can do there's nothing mm -hmm. else you can really do about it and I suppose being exactly exactly what you do for a living, you want that kind of release to get out as well, eh? Yeah, it's pretty important. Mm. That is pretty important. It doesn't happen enough. But um, look, I've been sort of using this time, well, it's almost been a year now. A year's yeah, a yeah. lot of time when you think. It's a year of um, our lives just kind of gone. Yeah, it's just gone <laughs> like that, hasn't it? It has. Well, yeah. on a you know, photographically speaking, but oh, look, I've actually used it on a positive note, I think I probably spent a lot more time looking back over, you know, what I've done in the past, you know, the images that I've taken. Yeah. Actually looking at other photographers, which is something I never did before. I just sort of kind of did my own thing and, you know, who came on the ride with me, that was great. And I didn't spend that much time looking at other photographers and I have been and, yeah. um, that's kind of a double-edged sword, though, eh? It can be a double-edged sword. See, because I, I suppose I've always looked at other photographers, and I kind of sometimes wish I hadn't. Yeah. It kind of can skew what you want to actually photograph yourself. Yeah, look, don't get me wrong, mate. There's some amazing photographers out there that I've, you know, just people like, you know, Joe Cornish or... Or um, you know, a close friend of mine, Enrico Forsati. There's there's photographers out that I, it, it, you know, I'm very, I very much appreciate their work and have for for for, for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and, and but you know, spending more time on social media because you've got less, you know, you're not out on field, so you've actually got more time to keep this thing in front of your face. Yeah. Scroll, and, scroll, and scroll. It's going out. <laughs> And to be honest with you, it's 
been good and bad looking at other people's photography. And I actually look back at mine and see a lot of the mistakes that I've made with many, many things. And I've reflected on it and I've spent more time reading books and listening to podcasts and, yeah, yeah. and things like that. And I think it's actually been, for me on a personal level, it's been um, it's been really good. It's like I've been yeah. stretching before I go to the gym. I just can't wait to go to the gym when that yeah, happens. This is, yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> You're bursting with energy to get out there and get shooting. Yeah, them, eh? yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're yep, kind of, yep. we're all in that sort of boat at the minute where all you can do is really plan your trips and plan what mm. you want to go and shoot. Yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, what kind of places are you planning on going when you can actually get out? Look, for now, I'm just actually hoping that I can... I, I live in Rome, so the region we're living in is called Lazio, which is about 150 kilometres of diameter at the yeah. most. Um, and we're actually not allowed to travel out of that area. Um, unfortunately, I'm quite restricted to, you know, wilderness photography within this region um that's pretty good though even, that's pretty yeah, good though compared to our bad. five miles <laughs> but there's many beautiful places close to rome which i've photographed the hell out of over the last 20 years but um you know the typical italy that you would sort of recognize as the tuscan countryside or the dolomites it's it's neater photography. You know, a lot of photography you can find around here, it's very messy bush. You know, right. it's not clean. You can't simplify your images. You know, you don't have a simple composition to make them a nice image. And yeah, it, yeah. so I, I do struggle. I do have a few locations I go to, but it's not, it's a very messy um, landscape, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah, it's not definitely. as curated as, uh, as the Lake District would be or yeah. overly manicured. Yeah, yeah, very manicured landscape, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, very, very limited. But, I mean, I've got 10 days off work now and I'm uh, planning to go out every single day, I hope, and, and shoot as much as I can because I've just had enough of, of, um, of, they call it an Italian, mental masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I can yeah. imagine, definitely. Sorry, mate, because we've it's it's it's, it's nine forty at night, so I've had a bit to drink and or well, not much, but still. Anyway, yeah. Right. Well, I'll I'll join you with that. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. So, any thinking about it, then what kind of uh, subjects really draw you? What's your what's your thing with landscape photography? What really draws you in? <sighs> oh, that's a good question. Oh, mate, for me. Um, anything where I can feel I'm um, completely absorbed by the by wilderness, and 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 having a spectacular light, you know, being yeah. in a moment where I've got that real light. I think if you've got light, you've got landscape. Yeah, yeah. And look, I haven't travelled that much around the world. I mean, outside of Australia, where I'm, you know, born and bred, and and in Italy. I've travelled a little bit in Europe, but I haven't been to Iceland and places like that. I, sp I spend a lot of time in Patagonia, and uh, yeah, Patagonian yeah. landscapes for me are the the incredible. I mean, um, I, I had workshops over there, and some of the places we go to, no one's ever been to before, and they're just amazing. Yeah, they, it looks awesome. Looks yeah. awesome. It's, it's not it, somewhere I've ever been, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And it's just that sense of isolation, and you being there just amongst wilderness. And, and if you can be in that you know, in harmony with nature and get beautiful light, you know, anything can come out, you know, it's up yeah. to you to make a composition out of it. And that's, that's, that's what's beautiful about photography. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Mm. See, mm. see, we're going back to what we were saying before about the the Lake District, because that's pretty much on my doorstep. Mm. And it's, it's, as we were saying, it's manicured landscape. It is. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. It's beautiful. It's absolutely yep. stunning, but I crave wilderness. <laughs> yeah, I crave Different that sort of feeling that you're just describing there about being out in it, and and there's there's no sign of man really. It's just pure. Well, wilderness. I think in I think in the UK you can only really get that in um, maybe Snowdonia and and parts of Scotland. Yeah, I mean, there's that's parts pretty of Scotland. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Italy, you can't travel like there at the minute. So again, no, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, in Italy, we've just got 
sections of the Dolomites that are that are um, that are considered wilderness, but a lot of the places that you're going to go to now have just been oversaturated by photographers. Just incredible amounts of photographers that go to these destinations now. It's um, it's incredible, and just tourists in general because they've seen photographers taking images of yeah. certain places. It's just uh, it's nothing like it's what in the United States, but it's. Yeah. Um, you know, well, it's hard to it's hard to get yourself immersed in wilderness when you've got a hundred tripods on each side of you, isn't it? Yeah, and it's you kind of you get that kind of guilt feeling as well. Is yeah, it, am yeah. I creating this? Am I kind of adding to this problem? Well, yeah, I suppose we right. all do with being photographers. Mm. We all do kind of add to the problem because it's social media magnets, aren't we? Really, it's people scroll mm. through, see a beautiful place, and they want to visit it. So, yeah, yep, yeah, that's for sure. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So with that in mind, what do you, how do you kind of handle that? How do you deal with that? Or do you just put it to the back of your mind and not even think about it? What's to the back of my mind? Sorry, mate. Exactly. Basically, um, how how do you deal with the thought of are we adding to the problem of uh, foot traffic on on wilderness areas and what have you by by being photographers? Um, look, on a personal level, I don't generally tag where i've been and if yeah. i do tag where i've been it's probably because it's a place that everyone knows already anyway so yeah. you know um how do i feel about other photographers doing it yeah it's not nice i mean there's evidence that that some locations have been completely destroyed because of because of landscape photography yeah. um and I, I think the majority of them that that i know of are uh they're in the United States. Um, Iceland is very concerning yeah. um, because that's one place I won't go to. Um, yeah. Not because I don't think it's beautiful, because there's just too many photographers there, mate, and I don't want to <clears throat> contribute to the – it's good to contribute to tourism, but I just – for me to actually be immersed in wilderness, I don't actually feel I could leave my footprint there as a photographer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so the thing with that is, as well as I'm part of a group called Nature First, and that's definitely about not leaving your kind of mark on the on the landscape, and uh, very much about not kind of tagging your locations so that we don't have such an impact on the environment. So, what I want to do sure. is I'll leave a link in this uh, uh, video below to nature first if you want to go and check it out it's free to join and it's just a, a community of photographers that want to really look after the wilderness that's great so um pentax then why pentax you're the first person that's ever asked me that am i no <laughs> <laughs> just just interested actually yeah yeah why pentax? of course why pentax i started taking also, the first camera I picked up was a Pentax, mate, and it was a beautiful camera. I mean, I was shooting back there with digital. I used to shoot with Fuji Valvia. I don't know if you've ever yeah, heard yeah. of that before. That was a, yeah. the film of choice back in those days, a beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful film. And um, I, I basically held off until, what was it, 2007. In 2007, yeah, yeah. the... Pentax won the TIPA, the TIPA Awards. The, you know the German awards? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah they tipper. actually won yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, they won it for the best digital camera that year. It was the, called the Pentax K10. Right. And so, you know, <sighs> digital cameras have already been out for a few years. And then I saw that they won this award and I thought, let me look into it a bit further. I looked into it and I thought, you know what? I think it's time I stepped into digital and I just happened to get the Pentax because it won the award and... Since yeah. then, their interface hasn't changed. Their lens quality has still remained excellent, top of the line lens. They've always been historically famous for their for their lens quality. Yeah, and and they've just developed slowly over the years. They've always been a very small company. They're not, um, you know, they're not Nikon. They're not Canon. Um, but they have a percentage of the market. They've always seen, they've always maintained, and I've just been used to the interface, and I've always just been so happy with the results I've got from yeah, using yeah. a Pentax camera. I've just stuck with them. And yeah. um, look, to be honest, a lot, over the last couple of years, the gear they're bringing out. There's the the K1 behind me there, sitting up on the tripod. Yeah, yeah. Um, my second wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shh, 
Keep your voice down. Right. That cam- <laughs> Sorry, she's putting the kids to sleep. She can't hear me. The door's closed. That camera behind the back of there, you'd be surprised what it can pull off. And uh, I've been out on field with guys and they've, they've, they've seen, you know, what comes out of that camera later on. It's incredible. Yeah. It's just that they just don't market themselves enough. And I don't even know if they're even interested in having that percentage of the market. I mean, um, you know, they're, strange out a, one, eh? they're bringing out a new camera now. It's been announced. It hasn't been released yet. And they've they've actually announced we're not going mirrorless. Yeah. Well, I suppose they, they've got a corner of the market there, haven't they? Because everybody else is panicking to go mirrorless. And if they're saying, yeah, no, uh, we're not going to bother. Well, they're not going to bother because the majority of the people, majority, a, bi- a big chunk of their market is people who've been using their lenses for the last 50 years. Yeah. And they want to maintain, they want to keep using those lenses they've been using since the 60s. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, what is mirrorless? I mean, it's just a, a screen that just, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you've got, you know, a, a reflex camera, you, your, yeah. your prism just flips up and... You've got mirrorless there, really, to, to some extent. These cameras now, um, you know, to, to maintain the digital SLR market and innovating the digital SLR market, you you can give people the option of, of how they want to shoot. I mean, if I'm ha- if I'm shooting handheld, I've got the option of feeling it with my yeah. eye, looking through the OVF and feeling it and seeing, you know, um, the pentaprism, you know, the real life, um, feeling behind it all, and yeah, yeah, you know, there's many reasons behind Pentax. And look, I've just stuck with them, and I've used other cameras when I've been out in field that, that, that you know other guys are using, and I just don't feel comfortable with them. And I actually don't like their raw files. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. Mm. So you get kind of yeah. used to a look of a camera as well, I suppose. As opposed to when you get used to the look of the raw files, certainly. Yeah, it's not just that. Look, I can. I could probably bring up some photos for you and show you some images that are pure raw files and I've done nothing to them. I might right. have just opened up the shadows a little bit because I tend to usually underexpose so I don't burn my burn my highlights. Yeah. And I haven't done anything else to them and just left right. them at that because the you know the the raw files that come out of these cameras are insane. It's weird that they haven't got that big chunk of the market. I don't understand why, but it doesn't bother me. I'm yeah. getting what I want to get out of these cameras and I'm happy to stick with them. Well, de- definitely. I think it, a lot of it is just down to, you say, just just branding and marketing and they, they don't really market themselves, yeah. do they? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, Maybe they don't have to. It, but... <laughs> well, if you know that you've got... I mean, I was reading um, some, some data recently. In 2010... Um, uh, something around, I think it was 22 million uh, digital SLRs sold worldwide. Right. Okay. In 2019, it was 2.5 million. Yeah. Yeah. It's 90% drop off. Yeah. yeah it's scary, isn't it? It is. And Pentax have a constant percentage of that market that hasn't changed in 10 years. So yeah. maybe they're happy to contain that that constant that constant market doing what they're doing so yeah i'm happy with it yeah Yeah, definitely Mm. workshops then you run workshops Mm. mainly patagonia patagonia and um i do a few local ones around italy mainly tuscany right Mm. future plans to do more well (laughs) all mine got cancelled mate due to the covid as as a lot of us did yeah uh, as you yeah. know, like I, I, I work full time, so I don't have that much time to, to spend, um, you know, away from home. Oh, I have a family. I've got two children and I don't want to neglect them. Yeah. So basically, uh, I'm happy to, it's not, it's not about making money. It's actually just about being out of field with people. I actually love being around people and love being together with other photographers and yeah, yeah. to actually, if I can do that by, by giving, uh, you know, the people, the option of coming on a workshop with me and learning something off me. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And for me, it's, you know, Patagonia once per year, I go there in autumn, in their autumn, once per yeah. year, we spend 
uh, you know, 13, 14 days in Patagonia. I come home. I've been away from home for two weeks. I come home and then, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> get thrown at me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have um, the children. They're all yours. Yeah. Then I've just got a few local ones that I do yearly. I've got some German photographers that come down to, to Tuscany every year and we do workshops in Tuscany, which is only two hours up the road for me. So to, to organize to go away for a weekend is quite easy and I know the place really well. So yeah, yeah. For me, I'm happy with doing those and it's um it's a shame I can't do more, but you know, life is life and you know Yeah, it's, it's not all about photography. <laughs> well not not all of it, no. We wish it would be, but um, you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. Cheers, anyway, mate. Cheers. I've... Cheers, buddy. Yeah. What are you drinking again? It's uh, Saint Lucian rum. Never heard of it, mate. No, what it's you... uh, from the it US. Special, was it? <laughs> from the US Virgin Islands. It's pretty strong stuff. Jeez. <laughs> Squinting at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks, buddy. And uh, where where can people find out more information about you? Oh, any social media thing. I actually hate to say the word, the name Instagram, but yeah, I am on Instagram. Um, yeah. There's probably like 27 Matt Bishops out there. Just find the one with the least amount of followers and that'll be me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, all over Facebook. I have quite yeah. a bit good success on Facebook for some reason. I don't know why. I post something on Facebook, it goes mental. I don't understand yeah, how that's yeah. possible. And it doesn't on Instagram, but anyway. It's I've strange. got a YouTube channel. Um, but I just kind of use that to document every now and then something I'm doing. I think it's nice if people want to follow you that they can, they can yeah, see yeah. what you're doing out on field every now and then. But I don't put that much of an effort into it i probably should because it's nice but yeah it's good i, um, I enjoy it i enjoy it, it must yeah well, you do a bloody good job at mate so keep, keep, keep doing it yeah thanks buddy yeah right well what i'll do is i'll place all those links down in the uh, in the description below so people can get can get a hold of you it's been a great chat mate thanks very much for coming on thanks mate take care Speak to you soon see Bye. you buddy bye watching this, then I assume you're someone who is passionate about both photography and the natural world. Over the last decade, I'm sure you've seen the incredible growth in photography. Everyone has a camera these days, and everyone wants a beautiful nature photo to share with the world. Unfortunately, the passion to capture that image often overrides thoughtfulness. Wildflower fields are being trampled and destroyed. Delicate, unknown locations are being widely advertised, bringing crowds of people, transforming wild places into urban spaces. Regulations, private property, and the well-being of wildlife are ignored in the pursuit of an image for Instagram. If such things weigh heavily on you, consider joining Nature First, the movement for responsible nature photography. This is a global initiative to help recover the role of nature photographers as caretakers and ambassadors of the natural world. There are no membership fees, no ads, no gimmicks, just an opportunity to be part of this global initiative of nature photographers dedicated to caring for the natural world. You can learn more at naturefirstphotography.org.